In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And good morning, everybody. You're all very welcome, as always. And it is our family mass. But a lot of the boys and girls were here last night and at the half nine mass this morning because it's one of those weekends of preparation work for uh, First Holy Communion. And so to do this in memory uh, program has been on. So we have less boys and girls than we normally would at this Mass. But when we come to do a little bit of talking, uh, I think we're going to be joined by some of the choir as well here at the front of the altar. Anybody, everybody is most welcome uh, this morning. Now, there is no particular intention uh, booked for this Mass this morning. And so I am happy to celebrate this Mass for the intentions of all parishioners and also in remembrance of all our dear departed ones. But we do remember those who died recently. Hilary Brennan, whose removal will be here tomorrow evening and our funeral mass on Tuesday morning at half past 11. We pray too for Dermot Devlin, Don Coughlin, John Heffernan, and Myra Quigley, uh, Joan Lee and Kathleen Nolan. We include to all our own deceased relatives and friends and those who may have nobody to recall their memory at this time. May they rest in peace. Now, today is the third Sunday of the season of Advent, only a Sunday and a few days left until we celebrate Christmas. And today is known as Gaudete Sunday, a Sunday when we're asked to have a sense of hope and joy in our lives. And consequently, the rose-colored vestments are in use today uh, rather than the ordinary purple of the other Sundays. And we're going to express this spirit of hope and joy by the lighting of three Advent candles, two purple from the last two weeks, and then the rose-colored one. And I'd invite Harry now, uh, one of our servers this morning with Michael, uh, to light the three candles so that we may enter into the spirit of this day of joyful waiting and preparing for the Lord. Well done. Thank you very much, Harry. And that's a reminder to us that sometimes life can take a bit of effort as well, isn't it? It just doesn't always happen smoothly, so well done. So now, uh, to prepare ourselves to uh, celebrate our Mass well this morning and to help each of us prepare for the Lord's coming, we take a quiet moment. Now let us gather ourselves into the presence of God, acknowledge our human weaknesses, our sins, our faults and failings. And as we do that, we ask the Lord for his mercy, his compassion and forgiveness in each of our lives. So, quietly. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity. Enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. 
We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. So now we be seated for our first reading, which Rachel is going to be doing for us, and it's coming from the prophet Isaiah, and it's reminding us that when Jesus comes, when the Son of God comes into the world, things will be very different. The blind will see and the deaf will hear, the disabled will leap like a deer, and tongues once silent will shout. And then after the reading, uh, Cara will lead us in the psalm. A reading from the prophet of Isaiah. Thirsty deserts will be glad, and the barren lands will rejoice and blossom like flowers. They will bloom everywhere and sing joyful songs. They will be as majestic as Mount Lebanon, and as glorious as Mount Carmel or the Plain of Sharon. Everyone will see the glory and the majesty of the Lord our God. The blind will see and the deaf will hear. The disabled will leap about like deer. The, and tongues one silence will shout. The people the Lord has rescued will come back singing as they enter Zion. Happiness will be a crown they will always wear. They will rejoice and be glad because all sorrows and worries will be God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Please stand for the Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. I knew there was something amiss because I understand it's the Gospel of Matthew today. Now, John, that's John the Baptist in his prison, had heard what Jesus was doing, and he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who is to come, or have we got to go and wait for somebody else? Jesus answered, Go back and tell John what you hear and see. The blind see again, and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised to life, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. And happy is the person who does not lose faith in me. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Now we be seated, please. Now I'm going to give the girls and boys at the girls in the gallery a chance to get down here in a little minute. So we'll take the first collection uh, while they're on the way. And I invite the other girls and boys in the congregation uh, to come up here as well. Uh, for a few minutes chat and I encourage the parents and uh, grandparents to give a little bit of support to get them up here as well. Would you be kind enough to do that? Now I think there's some more in the congregation as well. Come right on up, please. Yes, there's some more coming. Now, we want a bit of gender balance this morning as well, so we're short of boys. Now, I'm going to do the notices while the collection is happening. And the notices this morning, there aren't that many, but they're important. Firstly, the Christmas Jews envelopes are ready for delivery. And inside the envelope is also the parish Christmas card containing the Christmas mass schedule for the parish. If possible, we ask you to collect the Jews' envelopes for your own road, and maybe for some for your neighbours as well. So if you can be of any help, please call in to Philip in the sacristy after Mass, and there is plenty of work to be done. And I thank everybody who's helping. Now, this evening is a beautiful occasion here. Our annual parish cardinal service will take place this Sunday evening at 7 o'clock, and it features all the Uh, great singing and music groups of our community. So we look forward to hearing you all this evening and refreshments will be served as usual in the parish centre afterwards. So that's seven o'clock this evening, our annual carol service. Now on Tuesday evening, the reconciliation service, that's confession with several priests available, will take place here on Tuesday evening at 7.30. Uh, Going forward to next Saturday, the annual ecumenical cardinal service will take place in the courtyard of Marley Park. It will be at four o'clock in the afternoon, and I understand that's always a wonderful family occasion, and I look forward to joining in uh, there next Saturday afternoon at four, when light will give way to darkness, and that will be illuminated by the lanterns of those taking part. So you're encouraged to go along and be a support, and indeed be a great part of it, giving full voice. Now, the repository at the back of the church is well stocked with Christmas items. There is a selection of packets of Christmas cards, Advent calendars, cribs, and many other seasonal items. Christmas mass bouquets are also on sale. Now, additional copies of the BCO newsletter, that's the newsletter of our three parishes, Ballyroan, Churchtown, and Redfarnham, are also available at the back of the church as you leave and you're welcome to take one, although at this stage they should have made delivery to all the homes of our community. And after Mass, there are some volunteers uh, doing the hospice collection for Our Lady's Hospice in Harles Cross. I need hardly say much about that. We all know the wonderful care that the hospice provides for so many people in their hour of need and towards the end of life, and I'm sure you will be very supportive. Last but by no means least, our local conference of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul thanks you for your generosity last weekend and the amount collected here was €14,645. That's €14,645 
and some additional donations have come in uh, since last weekend. Now, that's all the notices for this morning. Uh, the rest you can read on the um, newsletter uh, when you are uh, going home. Now, I better have a chat with the girls and boys. Have we any boys yet? Now, maybe you might face up this way for a moment, would you? Just do a little bit of an about turn. And thank you for coming up. We'll have to do something about the gender deficit, won't we? Are you shy? Like myself, is it? Now, thank you for coming down and for those that came up also. Now, I want to mention four different people this morning. So, have you good memories? Do you know who the first is? Just guess, you might be right. Jesus? That's a very good guess, but I want to get somebody else out of the way first. Who else? Yes? Very good. Do you all hear that? John the Baptist. Okay. And I wasn't thinking of John the first this morning. Who else might it be? Have we all got very serious, have we? I don't think you are. Who else do we be thinking about before Christmas? Very good, Mary, that's right. And next Sunday is Mary's special Sunday in our church and in our Mass. Why would Mary be there? Because she is the mother of Jesus, isn't she? And were it not, were it not for Mary and her generosity, Jesus might not have got into the world. So we'll be thanking God for Mary next Sunday in our Mass and in our readings. But now it's strange that this character hasn't been mentioned yet. Who could it be? Now, it's not somebody we know is very holy or anything. God. God. I tell you, this is a very spiritual gathering this morning, isn't it? There must be great work being done in some of our schools, in fact, I think in all of them. I'm still looking for another name associated with Christmas. Yeah. Santa. Well done. <laughs> you know, when you, when you sometimes ask at the family mass about different figures of the Christmas story. Santa is nearly always the first, isn't he? And with good reason. I still look forward to Santa even though I'm a pensioner now. So, I was so yeah, we have all covered him. Now I'm going to put him in a particular order. Okay, are you listening? So the first I'm going to put is Santa. Not saying Santa is the most important part of Christmas, but Santa is a very big part of Christmas, isn't that right? Don't we all wake up on Christmas morning wondering what Santa brought us, don't we? Now, do you know how many sleeps there's left between now and Christmas? Nine. Well, now you must be in a different place to me. <laughs> I did a count yesterday and I got one more. Ten, would that be right? Maybe you're right. Maybe it's, maybe it's only nine, but you're, you're spot on and well, well. Yesterday was ten, today it's nine. Well, now, there we are. Okay, well, now, so, I think that Santa is a very important part of Christmas for, um, for all the boys and girls, because he brings us gifts, doesn't he? And he, he reminds us to be generous with one another, doesn't he? And when I was a student for the priesthood a long time ago, there was a parish priest I knew, and he got up on Christmas morning and he, he did something that was nearly unforgivable altogether. He had a different story about Santa, and God knows it was no help to the boys or girls. So we won't be doing that here this year. You needn't worry. So, okay, so it's 10 sleeps, 9 sleeps, whatever it is now, uh, to Christmas. So that's the first part of this morning. Uh, Santa will come and he will be very generous with all of us with gifts and presents. And that's a reminder that at Christmas we'll all be good and generous and caring with one another, won't we? And it's not just at Christmas, but throughout the year as well, it's a good spirit to have, to be generous and caring and loving towards one another. Okay, so Santa is the first person, if you like, out of the way this morning. And I'm told also that he is going to phone us at the, family, at the Mass on Christmas Eve. So that's the Mass with all yourselves taking part, and that's at going to be at what time? 
five o'clock, isn't it? I think it's five o'clock, so he'll be with us during the Mass. He's going to phone us at some stage and to tell us where he is on his journey um, to here. That all right? And uh, so look forward to that phone call. And, uh, but the, he, the message is always the same. Get home to bed early so that we'll all be asleep when the time comes. Now, I don't want someone telling me after Mass I was telling lies on the altar. I'm just telling the story, that's all. Now, so that's Santi taking care of for the moment. Now, we heard of some of the special people in the, in the stories for Advent and Christmas. Who mentioned John? Very good. John the Baptist. Very good. John the Baptist is one of the central people in the whole story of Advent. What was his job? To? No, I don't think he was. <laughs> but good try. You're doing very well. His job was to? Begins with P. Preached. Very good. Yes, he was to preach. And what was he to preach? That God, yes? To prepare Jesus. Well done. Prepare was the word I was looking for. So well done to you all. So his job was to prepare the way for Jesus coming into the world. Okay? And these weeks are given to us to prepare ourselves to welcome Jesus as well. So I'm not going to look for answers to this one this morning, but I would ask each of you and all of us here in the church, how are we preparing to welcome Jesus Christ into our own lives? Are we doing a little bit of prayer at home as well as at school? Are we taking a little bit of time to close our eyes and to think about Jesus coming? Are we? And are we living the way that Jesus would hope we would? Are we being kind? Are we being helpful? Are we being loving? And above all, that we're not causing trouble of any kind. Now, I don't think there's anybody here who would cause trouble, is there? Not at all, no. And I, believe, I nearly believe it. Okay, so that's two of the four characters taken care of. So John the Baptist is calling us to prepare the way for Jesus. And then when Jesus comes, the most important person of the story is Jesus. When Jesus came into the world, what did he come to do? Or is that too hard? Yes? Hands up all the time. Teach people about God. Lovely. Well done. He to teach people about God. And what did he tell us? Did he tell us to hate one another? To be kind. To be kind. Well done. Anything else? It's because Jesus is the Son of God. He is the Son of God. Well done. Um, he told us to love each other. Very good. He told us to love each other. Well, ain't that's nearly enough about Jesus for the morning, is it? He told us to love each other, to care for one another, and to build up a better world where there'll be a place for everybody, where everybody will be loved, respected, and appreciated. And our world today is not like that because there's many people left out, many people treated harshly, a lot of trouble in our world. So Jesus is giving us a whole new way of looking at the world. He's asking us to build up a world where everybody will be loved, cared for, and respected. So the bigger people will know this morning a lot of good work has been done in building up that world, but we still have a long journey to go. Now that brings me to my fourth and final person this, this morning. Do you know who that is? Mary. Mary. Uh, next Sunday we'll give Mary a little run, won't we? Because we owe Mary a huge debt of gratitude because she brought Jesus into the world, didn't she? She brought the Son of God, the love of... Oh, here's another hand up once more. And Joseph was Mary's wife. Very good. Joseph was her wife, was he? I thought it was her husband, but anyway. So, anything else? Now, who's the fourth person? This is the end the last bit. The fourth person this morning is too hard a question. It's my fault asking hard questions, but will you listen carefully just for a moment? The fourth person this morning that this Sunday is all about is about you, it's about me, and it's about each one in the congregation. So we know that Santi is coming, that John the Baptist is telling us to get ready. We know what Jesus 
uh, tells us and asks us to do. But the question is, how are you and I and all of us? We're the fourth person you like in the story this morning. How is each one of us preparing to welcome Jesus uh, to celebrate Christmas? Now, would you check that when you go home with your families and your parents and see what would be a good way for each of our families to prepare for Christmas and to welcome Jesus? Because there will be a lot of pressure in the next week to get so many things done. Big queues going into the supermarkets, a lot of shopping to be done, cards to be sent, many, many things to be done. But how will we really prepare to welcome Jesus into our own lives into our families, into our schools, into our community. Now, well done to you all, and thanks a million. I will give you space to get back up uh, on the gallery, those of you who are going there. Thank you so much. Weren't they very good? Well done. Even though that is intended to be child-friendly, it's not only for children, it's for all of us to reflect on some of the significant parts of the Advent and Christmas story and to ask ourselves, how are we and what preparations are we making? So now I invite you to stand, uh, please, for our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on a Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now Grace is going to lead us in our prayer of the faithful, and we ask the Lord now to listen to all our prayers on this third Sunday of Advent, a day that invites us to have a spirit of joyful hope as we await the Lord's coming. For all who follow Christ, that they may be happy as they prepare for the Lord's coming. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who suffer from hunger and want, that the well-off may share with those in need this Christmas. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For people whose hearts are broken, that their friends may bring them comfort. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For prisoners, immigrants, and homeless people, that they will know God cares for them when people are kind to them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who are in any kind of need, especially the people we remember now. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And quietly now for a moment, in silence, we bring our own personal thoughts and our own prayers into God's presence. Lord, hear us. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, you know the great needs and concerns of all of us. We bring to you all our prayers, but also our prayer of gratitude and thanksgiving. And we make all of these prayers through Christ our Lord. So now we be seated, please, and we have our usual uh, share collection, and I thank you for your continued support and generosity. And could we have the gifts brought to the altar, please?
With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away our iniquities and cleanse us from all our sins. Thanks, Let us now pray, my sisters and brothers, that this sacrifice of ours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We take one of the Eucharistic prayers primarily intended for uh, younger people. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God, our Father, you have brought us here together so that we can give you thanks and praise for all the wonderful things you have done. We thank you for all that is beautiful in the world and for the happiness you have given us. We praise you for daylight and for your word which lights up our minds. We praise you for the earth and for all the people who live on it and for our life which comes from you. We know that you are good, you love us and do great things for us. Father, you are always thinking about your people. You never forget us. You sent us Jesus, your son, who gave his life for us and who came to save us. He cured sick people. He cared for those who were poor and wept with those who were sad. He forgave sinners and taught us to forgive each other. He loved everyone and showed us how to be kind. God, our Father, all over the world, your people praise you. And so now we pray with the whole church, with Francis our Pope, Dermot our Bishop, in heaven the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Joseph the Apostles and all the saints, always sing your praise. And so now we join with them and with all the angels to adore you as we sing. God, our Father, you are most holy, and we want to show you that we are grateful. We now bring you bread and wine, and we ask you to send your Holy Spirit to make these gifts for us into the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your Son. Then we can offer to you what you have given to us. On the night before Jesus died, he was having supper for the last time with his apostles. And at the supper, he took bread from the table. He gave you thanks and praise. Then he broke the bread. Then he shared it with his friends and he said to them, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
When supper was ended, Jesus took the cup that was filled with wine. He gave thanks, gave it to his friends and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Then he said to them, Do this in memory of me. In song, let us now proclaim the mystery of faith. So now we have done what Jesus asked us to do. We remember his death and his resurrection, and we offer you, Father, the bread that gives us life and the cup that saves us. Jesus brings us to you, and he welcomes us as you welcome him. Father, because you love us, you invite us to come to your table. Fill us with the joy of the Holy Spirit as we receive the body and blood of your Son. Lord, you never forget any of your children. And so we ask you to take a special care of those we love, especially our families and friends, and all those we do not love as we should. We pray too for all those who have died, especially those I prayed for by name at the beginning of our Mass. Remember everyone who is suffering from pain or sorrow. Remember Christians everywhere and all other people in the world. We are filled with wonder and praise when we see what you do for us through Jesus, your Son, and so we give you praise. And through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. So now I invite you all to stand, please. Are we going to sing? Lovely. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, to say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with each one of you. Amen. So as we approach the Christmas season and the Lord's coming, let us offer to each other now a sign of that peace. Peace. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep all of us safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. So thank you all for being with us for a Mass for this, the third Sunday of Advent, Gaudete Sunday, when we're called to rejoice in preparation for the Lord's coming. I thank everybody who helped or took part in any of our ministries uh, during our Mass this morning. To one and all, many thanks. As always, to the choir, uh, Sister Maria and all the girls, Sister Jane as well, to everybody involved, very many thanks. It adds such a beautiful dimension uh, to our Mass. I wish you every God's blessing, all of you, for the week that lies ahead. In the nature of things, it is a busy week. But somewhere in that week, make sure that we remember it is the Lord that we are preparing to welcome. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is now ended, so we go in peace to love and to serve the Lord.